And then once you get that going like it should be, uh, trying to play rhythms just with the, any of, of your other fingers doing anything that you want to do is the next step, like... without consciously trying to pick out a melody or anything. And then with a tune like I'm a Pilgrim, it's pretty easy to, to work at the melody because the melody is not very complicated. And then this is by itself. You can take your even hand off the chord. And then we're at A7. Take your, this whole chord off again for this next part. And then we're going to hold an A7 chord here. Now, in this style of playing, a common way to make an A7 is to bar across the four strings, one through four, and uh, put your second finger on the third string right here, and you make this sound. And the reason you make it this way, you could make an A7 this way but it's, it's harder, it's more fatiguing, and the, the bass notes that you need are already there on the two open strings, so, you know, why, why duplicate that? In fact, the bass notes you get when you have these open are lower and fuller than the bass notes that you get if you close it up like this. So you can make it like this. And the melody's right here. And then this little walk up is just that by itself. When you end on it, you're in a B7th formation. And then this, which you'll hear in blues music and other forms of music, and it's, and it's used in this tune as from the, uh, at the fourth fret on the sixth and third strings. Now, you can just play these three if you want, and I'm playing the top string with it. Or you can play the top, the top two strings, so you're all top three strings, actually, with your hand kind of working as a unit, where you're working all these three fingers together, fingers one, two, and three, they're numbered, at the same time, so it sounds like... And I'm ending on an E seventh, and I'm hammering into the top note that I'm holding on the E seventh. Okay. Now the next time I go around, I'm changing the melody a little bit. You you may notice that a lot of these tunes that are in in used in this style, the form of the tune is very short. If you play through uh, the whole tune, it only takes like 40 seconds or something. So you want to extend it out to make it longer, like a you know performance length, like two minutes or more. So what you usually do is you'll come up with variations. Now you may come up with your own variations. You may use these variations, and you may think of more in the future. But the second time around, I did something like. And you notice this, if I want to play up here and I want to get that bass note, another thing I can do is wrap my thumb over the top of the neck and get that bass note that goes for the B7, like that, or this. In this case, it's easier because I'm articulating and, and you know, making a melody up here and I, you know, I don't have to think about it if I just wrap my thumb around there. Okay? If you haven't done that before, it doesn't take very much force to use your thumb over the top of the neck. Uh, just a little bit. Your thumb is your strongest finger. And just a little bit over the top of the neck and just a little bit of pressure and it gets a good clear note. And that's easy to do and just don't strain when you do that. Don't, don't go too far. Just a little bit over the top of the neck and a little bit of force. So, the second time through. Now, when I play this melody this time, I'm putting a chord underneath of it that th that's this very handy chord. Okay? It's, it's, it's an E7th. Okay? And, 
it's, it's almost mandatory to use your thumb there because you need this other finger that you've got left to play the melody that's on top of it. And then the A seventh part, like before. Now the next time I go through it, the third time, I'm going to start up here at a B7 that's held up at the 7th fret. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. And you can do this, a, a lot of people in, in the thumb style do this all the time. A B7th would be held like this. But if I, if I want to, I can just take this finger off. And since I've got it all muted anyway, you're, you're still going to hear the, what seems like the proper bass with it. Listen to it. In fact, I'm playing sort of those two bottom strings. This one's so muted that you can't tell that it's not the right note. And then I'm strumming really the upper strings, almost the, you know, th the fourth, third, and a little bit of the second even. Okay, here's a nice little figure. Chet Atkins uses this figure a lot. Okay, it's not too hard to play it, but you'll have to practice it. And it's a pull off from this note here, and then this, this one. Okay. Now, when I go to the E again, I use this formation. And this is a real standard, everybody uses it, thumb style guitar, E seventh chord. Okay, so instead of this, I have this at the seventh fret. And it just has a different sound than this E7. It's also very convenient if you've just been here. It's very much convenient to go here instead of all the way back down. So, And a little bluesy touch that you can add is this note here and you bend it. Just push it up a little bit and bend it, not much. Just. A Another thumb style guitar standard formation for an A seventh is this right here. This is a very if you don't, if you don't want the hard A seventh chord, you can choose this easy one. It's only two fingers. It's a real nice open sounding A seventh. Uh, one thing you find in thumb style guitar when you play in the guitar friendly keys, which are typically E, uh, A. Uh, C sometimes, G sometimes, you find that you use, can use a lot of open strings and you get this open sound that way. So this passage. I like that sound a lot and you can play it a lot of different ways and, and modify it. Well, now we're going to slow this down a bit and uh, make a split screen so you can see both hands at the same time and you can follow along. <laughs> 